Dwight's been blessed with an incredible life, but it has not been easy. All you have to do is look at his career. I think people don't always realize how many games he pitched for the Mets. If you lived in the city and it was Dwight's turn to pitch, that was something you had to go to. There was pageantry to it, there was magic to it. You just had to be there. I've seen Seaver at his best. I've seen DeGrom at his best. I've seen Matt Harvey. But because he was 19 and 20 years old when he had his best seasons, there was something magical about Doc that I don't think anybody else could ever duplicate. The 85 year with the Cy Young, the 86 year with the World Championship, it wouldn't have happened without him. He put together years on the mound that, that if they could have been extended, would have been Hall of Fame years, would have been as good as probably anybody that's been seen in the game on the mound if things hadn't gone wrong. Doc has always been a kind, cordial, big-hearted guy, but he's human. And drugs and a lot of things that has impacted our communities over the past half century, nobody's immune to. I don't think any kid wakes up and said, I want to be addicted to drugs. It's a sickness, but it, it's something that he created, and, and it's something that he had to deal with. I have empathy for what he's gone through. I am sad because he never became everything that, that I thought he could be. But if you were there when he was young and you have witnessed everything he's gone through and you've seen him in a courtroom, I, I've rooted so damn hard for him as a player and I've rooted even harder for him to have some semblance of a happy life. He's got a good soul and a good heart. Doc always had a kindness to him in treating his teammates and in treating the fans. We all have family and friends that that been through a lot of things that were not good in life and for some reason there's always a shining light on them and we all pull for them and Doc's one of them. Last time we were here, it was for Keith's number retirement. Yes. And I asked you who you thought should be next. No. You remember who you said? Me? Yeah. <laughs> and I was here. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be careful what you ask for, right? <laughs> Taking the lead with the Mets, announcing that the club will retire Dwight Gooden's number 16 and Daryl Strawberry's number 18 in separate pregame ceremonies next season. Dwight, what was your immediate reaction when you got the call from the Mets that your number 16 was going to be retired? I've talked to Steve a lot, um, but never on the phone. So when I got the call, I thought it was a prank call at first. I'm like, now who's this? And then as he got talking and saying, you know, darn it, this is great. I was overwhelmed. The first time I got like choked up, I actually like teared up a little bit because I didn't think it was gonna happen. I thought I did way too much stuff off the field and deservedly so. I kind of like, got to the point where I had to accept it for like probably about, a minute, I just was crying. I couldn't even talk because it's like everything. Sorry. I was like everything that you went through, everything that you wanted, even like I was telling you earlier how I can't want to go back to the Mets and make it right with your fans. And now you get the opportunity. It's like the highest honor my team can give you. And I get to share this with my kids, my grandkids, the fans who's always been there. <laughs> so, yeah. I look like at it as a celebration of not just our career, but of life, because so many times where, you know, you basically had given up on yourself, but the fans wouldn't allow you to. You have just witnessed a striking event. He was a superstar, a key part, major part, and probably the greatest decade in New York Met history. There was never anything like a Dwight Gooden start at Shea Stadium. That was and is forever. He moved a city of eight, nine million people. He was as dynamic a force as the Mets have ever had, and that includes Tom Seaver. He ain't going to Cooperstown, but he's going to the outfield now at City Field. If it isn't enough, it'll do. 
David, Mel, my dad, Gary Carter, all these guys played a big part of my success, big part of my life. I look at that day when I'm on the field as a celebration, not just for me, but for my family, the fans, everybody in my organization that's been with me from day one.